Hi, I'm Dr. Joni Carley, and if you're a business or a nonprofit leader and you're ready to improve your systems, improve your outcomes, and up your satisfaction level, if you're ready to get past symptoms and solve problems at their core, if you're ready to just break through the status quo, if you need more alignment between your life and your livelihood, and if you're ready to just get some fresh perspective on what's going on, it truly really can be lonely at the top, and if it's time to make a transition of some sort, if it's time for any sort of transformation, I encourage you to stay with me for the next few minutes because I'm going to talk about different aspects than you might usually hear about of creating the work you love, the life you want, and the world we all want to live in. And I'm going to show you how those three things are really intertwined. And if you are ready to invest in any of those things right now, the so-called softer issues, well, studies say that investing in those things, you're likely to get at least a 600% return on your investment. Consciously managing those softer issues that we just talked about really does pay off. I've advised and consulted in boardrooms and head offices for decades, and I've been working with nonprofit and business leaders and their teams at the same time that I've been really deeply immersed in spirituality, in human potential technologies, and in global trends. And all of these things have led to some really deep questions and some really surprising discoveries that I found in traveling all over the world to, to follow these interests. And I've discovered a lot of things about leadership and about how things happen. What's important to me is causality, and that's what I want to share with you in the next few minutes, is insights into what causes success. What I've been experiencing is everybody wants to feel good in their mind, body, and spirits. That's just the human condition. That's just what we all want. And we all want to have that by just feeling hope, feeling love, feeling joy, feeling the stuff that people want to feel. And then there was going to work. And uh, for many people, especially leaders, they felt very trapped and often compromising the things that were most important to them in, in pursuit of the things that their jobs said were important to them. And there is a really powerful middle ground here, but too often it's being overlooked. And so what happens is people feel really crippled. They want to do the right thing. They're in constant questioning, constant um, kind of this isn't it syndrome, and really feeling like they're not really where they want to be. They're feeling burnout. They feel like they just need to break through. They have to get past the status quo. Uh, they have to get past that feeling of unfulfillment and general dissatisfaction. That, I see a lot of life and work conflicts, and that just doesn't need to be at a higher level of leadership. There is a lot of bleed over. Um, it doesn't end at 5 o'clock, but that doesn't mean that these things can't be resolved in a way that works for everybody. I see a lot of frustration. I see a lot of people feeling trapped and a lot of people feeling stressed. And I have worked and been with a lot of leaders who just feel that nagging sense of unease, like this just isn't quite it. And so I took a really big gamble. About 20 years ago, I started to really focus on the field of values-driven leadership and values-driven cultural development or organizational development, uh, just because it made sense to me. But there wasn't any proof yet. But fortunately, it was making sense to a lot of other people, too. And we saw values-driven companies like Facebook, Google, Zappos, Starbucks and many others start to really beat the odds and pull out way ahead. And so we saw also studies were being done and that the best companies to work for were beating the Standard & Poor's 500 by six times. That's a 600% gain. So something was going on about making these cultures that really were working for people, it's showing up in profits. And what they're working with is the invisibilities, the things that are under the iceberg. The iceberg is a really good analogy because most of it you don't see, yet it's what keeps everything in place for the part that you do see. 
So the same thing with an organization. You see when goals work out, you see structures, you see plans, you see strategies and systems and outcomes. But what you don't see are the prejudices, the patterns, the fears, the values and beliefs that are happening under the surface. And there's no accident that this chart and this picture look like reverse mirror images of each other because the higher profits come with doing the work beneath the surface to keep your culture and your leadership skills sharp at those invisible levels. So people were realizing that, but at the same time, I was seeing a lot of leadership situations where, where as they were embracing these kinds of ideas, the places that weren't the Googles and weren't the Zappos, they were getting a lot of pushback from the people around them who were saying that they were just too soft to be leaders, that they were too ungrounded, or these things made them look airy-fairy, or it was these things are unscientific, which is really not true, um, that, that you're too difficult if you're dealing with these softer things. It's easier to just deal with, with the hardcore numbers. And they say that people were naive, that they were just subscribing to the fluffy stuff. But there is absolutely no evidence that supports the idea that these kinds of softer issues are fluffy. In fact, there's a lot of evidence to the contrary, and I'm going to share a lot of that with you in the next few minutes. So here's one study on coaching, which manages these, these softer issues, um, and that it, it yields six times return on investment, which is about what the Standard & Poor's difference was, so no surprise there's a correlation there. But this breaks down the tangible and the intangible impacts, and I think this helps to really draw the line, this particular study, between if you have improved stakeholder relationships, improved teamwork, improved peer relationships, well, of course your organization is going to be stronger. Of course you're going to have better retention. Of course they're going to be more profitable because everybody's pulling together and working in the same direction. And there are a lot of things we can do to measure the intangibles because they aren't unscientific. They just aren't really captured and worked with the way that they could be. So when you reduce conflict and you increase organizational commitment, then your customers are going to have a better experience. You know, all of these things work together. And it also, the concrete and the non-concrete are very clear when you look at productivity in terms of training. So when you train on particular skills, you get about a 22% increase in productivity. When you combine that training with coaching, which deals with the intangibles, you increase productivity by 88%. And that's a really big capital improvement on your investment in training. People who coach and consult with people like me, they know that it, on top of developing their skills, which is always important, that developing the softer issues, so-called softer issues, is where the real payoff is. But probably the best reason to coach is from this study. Communication is most effective between people at the same level or between someone at a higher level to someone at a lower level. But the person at the higher level of values development and read that personal and leadership development, they're the ones in charge. It doesn't matter what your job title says. The person with the highest level of development is the person with the most authority. So if you have accomplished less in terms of those higher levels of development, there are people beneath you who will be leaders in situations where you probably don't want that. And so this has gotten clearer and clearer. People have recognized this enough over the years that it started to be codified in many ways. It's been proven all over the world. There's studies that really are irrefutable for how much the so-called softer issues work toward bottom line. So one way of looking at it is people say the triple bottom line, that not only are profits important, so are people on the planet. And 
that idea has morphed into a lot of other ways of calling this new way of looking at leadership and organizational development. I personally like to think of it as values-driven transformation that are based on common good type questions, really based on values. Other things that have happened over the years that I've been in this field is there have been a lot of international standards that have emerged. Most recently, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, 17 to-do list items for the entire world. Gross national happiness might sound funny, but it's used in countries along with gross national product as companies and countries and counties and organizations are measuring these wider, fuller spectrum ideas, they're improving their bottom lines. But the United Nations Global Compact has been around for a very long time, outlining how do you be a good business and a good global citizen, and where do you connect the dots? And the Earth Charter and Valdez principles, series principles, they're really good uh, philosophical underpinnings. So how do you negotiate these kinds of intangibles? How do you evolve yourself as a leader? How do you spark transformation in your company? It's awfully hard from, from your own chair to do that. I like to think of these things in, as mojo. And so the question I want to ask you is, how do you manage your mojo? And I want to move into that, but first I'd like to introduce myself a little better. I'm an executive coach and counsel, and I work with business and nonprofit leaders. I've been doing it for over 25 years. I have a doctorate in the reinvention of work. I'm a COACHU grad from a three-year program. I'm a former professor and a published author. I also speak and facilitate, and you can see I'm doing an organizational development work, and I do a fair amount of work around the United Nations. This was a leadership seminar. I also have a really insatiable curiosity, and that's taken me all over the world to stay with a tribe of headhunters in the Amazon jungle. I've been in the African bush with the tribe there, and Asia all throughout the temples, and uh, teachers there through Europe, the U.S. I've also really watched and taken part in the human potential technologies explosion. I've kept up with business and leadership best practices. I love science and civics. I'm pretty wonky that way. And I also love world religions and indigenous wisdom so much so that I ordained as an interfaith minister and I identify more as being spiritual than religious. I also keep up with international standards for common good and for best practices. And bottom line is I have developed my expertise in cultural transformation and that also includes leadership transformation. Here's some of the places I've been, some of the adventures, and some of the things that are important to me. And I wrote about some of this in a book with Deepak Chopra and Chicken Soup for the Soul fame, uh, Jack Canfield, uh, called Stepping Stones to Success. I'm volume one. And I've worked with a lot of clients from a mega international media conglomerate and uh, to a small business, a small IT business to an NGO at the United Nations. And this one I'm especially proud of because they're in my field and it feels extra sweet to get accolades from people that are in your field, a, a Fortune 500 corporate coaching company uh, that I was coaching. So what I've recognized over the years is that good leaders evolve, but great leaders consciously evolve. And they're consciously always evolving themselves, their organizations, and the world. They see themselves as players in the world. They, they stretch their identity. And I've also seen that the wheels of evolution of this kind of evolution are invisible. And that's why I'm going to show you a study that people who consult for leadership issues, rather than problem solving, get a higher return on their investment. So the amount of people who are doing this is really growing and 70% of the people who do coach, and this is a pretty large study, uh, they say that it's most appropriate for leadership development and not for problem solving. So how do you account for this mojo, for this invisible stuff, this kind of development that truly evolves you as a leader? Let's start with some of Albert Einstein's thoughts on what this is. He says, human beings, vegetables, or cosmic dust, we all dance to a mysterious tune, intoned in the distance by an invisible piper. 
So what about that invisible piping? You know, there's no real names for this. I'm calling it mojo, but but I've looked at all religions, all kinds of things around the world, and and I think the Taoists get it best. If you name it, then that's not it. So as a, as people, we can't really name it, but we know that it's some kind of alchemical force. Like we could put all the elements of a carrot in a lab dish, but we can't make a carrot because we don't have that alchemical capacity. We don't have that mojo. We don't have that dynamism. We don't have that energy. We don't have the vitality that makes life life to just pull out a thin air. But we can develop it. Mojo is not sourced by food. It's not sourced by money. It's not sourced by fame or success. And on the flip side of that, there are some religious beliefs that say, oh, it's sourced by poverty. It's sourced by suffering. No, it's not sourced by any of that, but it must be sourced. What we're talking about here is an alchemical driver that sources all things. And it can be consciously managed and developed or not. So we're talking about an alchemy of power. In terms of leadership, that lies between the tangible, what your results are, and the intangibles, how you're going about it. It lies between the formed and the formless. So this alchemy that I'm talking about is a metaphysical dynamism. It's a mojo that transforms your methodologies and your best practices and your strategies and things like that into outcomes that go beyond your expectations, that are more than the sum of the parts. And mojo is used by every competent boss every single day. You use it. The question is, how consciously do you use it? Do you really consciously capitalize on it? Do you measure it? Which this is a, a graph of one of the systems I use to measure these kinds of things. Uh, mojo produces results that can't be accounted for by math alone but it can be accounted for, it can be developed, it can be measured, and most of all, it can be taken to the bank. Not only, uh, going back to that study of the 20 publicly traded companies that were the top uh, and best companies to work for, they not only had 600% gain in their financial performance, they saw gains in stakeholder loyalty, they saw gains in innovation, they saw more retention, Team coherence, everybody's pulling in the same direction. Morale, vitality, good decision making from leadership all the way down to the janitor. And that's what you want is to, to have that kind of culture, to have that kind of leadership where everything's firing on all cylinders all the time. So the connection between financial performance and employee experience is extremely clear and extremely well documented. Here are some other ways of cracking at that with executive coaching studies. Uh, a different study that says 600% uh, gain, another one says 5.7% gain, um, another one that says that of everybody who's had coaching, they say that 78% uh, increased productivity by at least 50%. Imagine if you were 50% more productive. Imagine if it was 75% easier to deal with challenges. Imagine if you were 75% more satisfied. Here's another study with a 689% return on investment in coaching. And uh, it says there are a lot of changes that the, this particular study showed 1.5 million in annualized benefits. So the question about coaching being expense is well settled. It's not an expense. It's a capital investment. And that's really important to be clear on that. Here's another study that people who coach say that is a positive change in performance, in relationships, in satisfaction. So if you are ready to evolve your work world by managing the full spectrum of your leadership and your organizational capacity, starting with level one, which is surviving, making sure your profits are optimum, that the lights are on, everybody's safe, that's just the basics. And then moving into best practices, how people are getting along. Are we staying on the cutting edge? Are we always growing and, and, and taking a look at ourselves and seeing where we are and where we want to be? Are we working as a really 
fine-tuned machine. Are we making a difference in our community? Are we good citizens? And are we good citizens of the world? And what we're finding when we measure companies and measure individuals on the scale, that when we get to full spectrum representation, we get higher profits, higher share prices, more innovation, all the things that we've talked about through this presentation. So if you are ready to explore the idea of getting some executive counsel, working on values-driven and data-based cultural development, and to look at it, just take a deeper cut on what's what in your work world, then I hope you'll consider scheduling a 20-minute no-obligation call with me at calendly.com slash drjoni. What we work on is renewing your professional and your organizational vitality, raising the bar on how you and your team are performing. We work on whether or not it's time to innovate and change and how to get through those changes to manage them so they work for you and they go efficiently and effectively. If you just want to have an objective and skilled sounding board who's worked with many, many people in many different leadership situations to feed back to you in a way that no one around you can do, if you just want to work through much more effectively, much more efficiently, what's up now and what's next, if you want to align your life and your livelihood so they're in sync and both are working in conjunction with each other, and if you want to realize the capital gains that come with a seasoned executive council, I hope you will schedule a no-obligation exploratory call with me. My guarantee is always that you're happy, bottom line, period.